Meg Records, the Meg Record Keeping Institute, Entity Number 79, Wanderers, Habitats, Various, Description, Becoming an instance of Entity 79, or a Wanderer, is the seemingly inevitable fate of humans who consume almond water. Like the wretched cycle, note, see Entity Number 15, Wretches, there are a number of ways to slow down the transformation, such as a diverse diet. Theoretically, the only way to completely avoid turning into a wanderer is to avoid almond water completely, but due to its properties, it is all but impossible to drink at least once. Image Caption A group of humans in the early stages of becoming wanderers. It's not until the transformation is complete that people avoid being in groups. Being quote-unquote born from humans, there are very few physical tells that distinguish a wanderer, as in the entity, from a wanderer, as in a human. The names of the two are distinguished by entity wanderers being capitalized and human wanderers being in lowercase. However, if you see a human wanderer whose eyes tend to reflect light in dark areas, footnote, evidence of the development of tapium lucidum reflective tissue found in the eyes of many front rooms animals, and footnote, they are probably a wanderer. Behaviors Wanderers are a neutral species. They will not attack unless cornered, preferring to flee by running or no clipping away. Note, see Phenomenon 5. Despite coming from a social species, wanderers are solitary, preferring not to be in groups larger than two or three people. In addition, their quote-unquote society is purely transactional and has no concept of altruism, requiring a trade before doing any sort of service, such as answering questions, guiding humans through a level, or even saving someone while in danger. Unless they are offered a trade of some sort, wanderers will stand by and watch someone die. Trading with a wanderer can be tricky, but they will accept any item they deem useful or are personally interested in, as well as pay back any quote-unquote life debts they may have incurred. Below are the most common trades wanderers perform. Item slash service given. One bottle of almond water. Item slash service received. A different variant of almond water. Item slash service given. One bottle of almond water. Item slash service received will act as a guide from one level to the next for 24 hours. Item slash service given. Information about new levels. Item slash service received. Information about shortcuts between levels. Item slash service given. New shoes. Item slash service received. 30 minute interview. Item slash service given. Saved from danger. Item slash service received will travel with their savior until they repaid the act. It is interesting to note that wanderers do not completely lose their identities from when they were human. They have a desire for, quote unquote, items of interest that serve no purpose except for sentimental value, such as odd trinkets or photographs from when they were human. These items can be used to barter, but their value will change from wanderer to wanderer. A trinket that is valuable to one wanderer may be worthless to another. For this reason, it is good practice to have a bottle of almond water ready to trade. Child Wanderers While most wanderers will not attack, it is not the same for children who have turned into wanderers. Their behavior is more unpredictable, because of the lack of emotional development before changing. Because of this, child wanderers tend to have more extreme behavior as well as trades that don't make sense, such as giving aid in exchange for seeing a silly dance. They are more likely to engage in threatening behavior because it amuses them. If you see a lone child in the back rooms, approach with caution. Biology Autopsies show that there are very few biological differences between wanderers and humans, except for four key things. An unusually small stomach, an enlarged liver, increased lean tissue mass, and tapetum lucidum being present in the eyes. Interestingly, wanderers show a lack of desire to eat, 
preferring in all circumstances to drink almond water. While wanderers are capable of eating small amounts of food, it does not seem to sustain them as well as almond water, and is only partially digested, as seen from the examination of wanderer excrement. The connection between wanderers and almond water is more than it being their main source of nutrition. It is how they are born. Generally, the more almond water a human drinks, the quicker their transformation into a wanderer. Humans who drink nothing but almond water tend to transform into wanderers after one year of being in the back rooms. Those who have been able to find regular food and water and supplement their diets with almond water tend to change after five to ten years. Only those who have very sparingly touched almond water seem to be free from the change. There are other factors that determine how rapidly a human changes into a wanderer, but consumption of almond water is the main determining factor. For example, the frequency of how often one explores the back rooms is an additional risk factor for quicker transformation, but it may be because of the tendency of explorers to travel lightly and only bring almond water to sustain them. Discovery Presumably, since there have been humans in the back rooms, there have been wanderers. There is no written evidence, but the amount of abandoned human encampments and the relative age of these encampments indicates the presence of wanderers. However, their main discovery came from what is now known as the, quote, mass desertion event, end quote, MDE. Across countless levels, multiple MEG leaders and members deserted their posts, leaving many outposts and research labs without leadership and information. MDE, interview number five, Marcus Brandit. It was like crazy, they, footnote, team leaders Monty Freeman, Elliot Villa, and Trinity Wilkins, who were in the back rooms for two years at that point, end footnote, just up and left, man. It was fine for a bit, people still did their jobs, Casey continued to get food, Brian kept the comms running. I just kept walking around, on patrol, you know, but it was weird. Everyone was tense, felt like we were waiting for the teacher to come back, but those guys never did. Most outposts were covered quickly. However, it was more specialized MEG outposts and research labs that suffered the most, with the loss of institutional knowledge heavily impacting projects, research, and other things of interest to the MEG. MDE interview number nine, Maddie Martin. Oh God, I don't even want to think about it. Warren left us so many unfinished projects, I didn't know what to do with them. There's something going on with mold, something to do with hydrophonics and almond water. Oh, and the one with liquid silence or whatever it is. These are just the ones I remember. Then it took us ages to find his notes, then pick the safe he stored them in. And then it took us even longer to decipher that guy's handwriting. The overseers were panicking a bit, thinking he had a project that dealt with the disease. Note, see Entity 19. But thankfully, he didn't have one. Okay, it was more like we couldn't find a record of one. Is it possible that he has a vial of the disease around, floating around in the back rooms? I don't want to think about it. Look, I got my bachelor's in geology. I deal with rocks. I know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but that's pretty much all I know about biology. I can manage the lab all right, get some projects going again, but until we get another biologist, his stuff is just going to sit in storage. However, nothing compared to the MDE on hospitals. MDE interview number 13, Gwen Callahan. Fuck. Them. Footnote. Dr. Rohan Daniels, a surgeon who had been with the Meg for two years and was an important asset due to their years of wilderness medicine training. End footnote. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't care who you think you are or what the fuck you're going through. You don't fucking leave in the middle of your shift. You don't leave volunteers floundering, and you sure as hell don't leave a patient bleeding out on the hospital floor. That asswipe left in the middle of surgery. They just left, leaving that poor woman's leg open. Because of that fucker, she died. If I see them again, well, I'll make a hound attack look like nothing. Months later, Dr. Rohan Daniels was found wandering level 540, really wild complex. They were cordial, 
but would not answer any questions until they were given a package of matches. Interview with Dr. Daniels by Eric Corbell. Corbell. Thanks for sticking around, Doc. Appreciate it. Daniels. Mm-hmm. Cordell. Corbell. So why'd you do it? Why'd you leave? Daniels. Oh, because I wanted to. Corbell. What? Daniels. I am confused. Was my answer not clear? I didn't want to be in level 11, the endless city, anymore, so I left. Don't see how that could be confusing. Daniels abruptly turns and begins to walk off. Corbel chases after them. Corbel. Wait, wait, I have more questions. Just answer one more, please. Uh, I'll give you my coat, my phone, this bottle of almond water? Daniels stops, turns, and holds out their hand for the almond water. Corbel. Okay, only have one question, I guess. So, why didn't you finish the surgery? The one that you were doing before you left? Daniels. Ah, I came to a realization. In this place, altruism is a trap. To care for other people bogs you down, keeps you stuck in one place. And for what? Gratitude? The camaraderie of the human spirit? What worth do those have if I'm dead? They are empty emotions, ones that are inherently selfish. If the Meg were truly grateful for my services or truly cared about us sticking together, would I not receive something from them? Something of equal value? Should my patients not give me recompense for my services? That woman has nothing for me. There is no reason for me to care whether she lives or dies. The only person I can truly count on is myself. If anyone else is a burden, and will only lower my chances of surviving in the back rooms. Daniels dips their head to Corbell before walking off. Daniels. I hope your question has been answered. Thank you for the almond water. Additionally, very few social bonds survive the transformation into a wanderer. As stated before, wanderer society is purely transactional and solitary, with little need for interaction. Though they have reproductive organs, few wanderers engage in procreation, and even fewer have children, human or otherwise. Presumably, children offer no benefit to them, and therefore are considered burdens. MDE Interview Number 25 Rosario Candela I just... it's hard. Children aren't stupid. They pick up on more than we think. They're always watching us, learning, and they rely on us to protect them, to guide them, to love them. So how do I explain that their parents don't want them anymore? Effects The mass departure required the Meg to drastically change how it stored information. Security was exchanged for accessibility and all documents required extensive documentation, enough that complete amateurs could easily pick up where others started. It is advised that parents and guardians set up an extensive network of potential guardians to look for their children in case they become a wanderer. The Meg has set up a network of orphanages across Level 11, The Endless City, and Level 1, Habitable Zone. In addition, Finding consistent, alternate forms of sustenance to almond water became a priority of the overseers. The wheat fields of level 10, bump the bumper crop, seemed like a likely candidate, but, due to the properties of the wheat, harvesting was quickly abandoned. The Meg have yet to find an easily replenished form of food for large communities aside from where almond water. While Lucky O Milk and Royal Rations have been investigated as alternate food sources, they have no noticeable effects on stopping or slowing the transformation. Excerpt from Almond Water Panacea or Poison Almond water is considered a miracle drink for many reasons, it being a complete source of nutrients as well as the mental effects it has on stopping the wretched cycle makes it a must-have supply in the back rooms. However, with the discovery of another transformation caused by the consumption of almond water, the Meg should reconsider whether it is, quote-unquote, safe. After all, what is the point of surviving if you're no longer human? Signed, Sergi Mahavir.